To thee we come, O Lord our God. Today in the Polish National Catholic Church, we celebrate the feast of the Christian family that our first bishop, prime bishop, Francis Hoder, instituted and established in 1914. Let us therefore, on this feast of Christian family, go before Almighty God and make an examination of our conscience that through the confessing of our sins, we might be found worthy to offer the gifts unto God. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us recite together the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with this authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whoever does not provide for relatives and especially family members has denied the faith it is worse than an unbeliever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed each of us with the gift of family, that through our family life, we may learn to love and care for others. Open our eyes to recognize that in all people we share bonds of kinship. May we unselfishly serve them who with us have been made co-heirs with Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the feast of the Christian family, we take the first reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame animals, all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the earth. God created mankind in his image. In his image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that crawl on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The response for today is happy are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and who walk in his ways. What your hands provide, you will enjoy. You will be blessed and prosper. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your home. Our children like young olive plants round your table. Just so will the man be blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem's prosperity all the days of your life. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called into one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom, you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, Love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so that they may not become discouraged. This is the word of the Lord.
children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Observe, my son, your father's bidding, and reject not your mother's teaching. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And when he, Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. At the third general synod of the Polish National Catholic Church, held in 1914, Bishop Hodder established the feast of the Christian family, which would be celebrated on the second Sunday in October. But in 1914, our first bishop called it the Holy Day of the Family. In the minutes, it was recorded that, quote, the Synod not only received the information, but with enthusiasm 
The thought given by Bishop Hother was greatly appreciated. The holy day of the family, a day to be set aside for the family. We look naturally as Christians to the dynamics of the holy family. We only have glimpses of the holy family in the New Testament outside the Christmas stories as found in the Gospels of Matthew as well as Luke. We know very little about the Holy Family. We know nothing about the Holy Family after they returned from Egypt to Nazareth, where Jesus was possibly three years old. We don't hear again about the Holy Family until today's reading, taken from Luke, where Joseph, Mary, and 12-year-old Jesus went up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. The story of a missing child and the frustration and fear that Joseph and Mary had, and in the end, the irony that Jesus said to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they found him three days later in that temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. At the end of the story, we read that Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. Another 18 years passed before we again read of Jesus at age 30 following the introduction of John the Baptist. And so the question is naturally asked, what kind of child was Jesus? I believe he was a child like all of us, and who maybe at times even got into trouble. But after the episode of Jerusalem, we read that Jesus went back with Mary and Joseph, and he became obedient unto them. And Jesus advanced in wisdom as he grew and found favor with God and man. I believe that though Jesus was and is the anointed one of God, the word that was made flesh, Jesus saw and learned righteousness from Mary and Joseph and who found favor with God. Both Mary and Joseph represents the pillars of the Christian values of a family. For men and women, mothers and fathers, who form the framework of a family, I believe that Jesus advanced in wisdom because he was a part of a family who were righteous before God and who taught their son Jesus about God. So what can we learn on this feast of the holy day of the family? We are taught in our faith that we need to be reborn by water and by spirit. We are taught that we need to put on the Lord Jesus. We are taught by Jesus that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth and we cannot be afraid to let that light shine. We cannot choose to hide it, as Jesus said, under a bushel basket. But he instructs us that we must let that light, our light, shine before others, so that they might give glory unto God, our Heavenly Father. And all of this begins at home. Unfortunately, there are so many broken and dysfunctional families with so many problems, like termites. The world eats away the strength and the structure of a family. But as Christians, forming the body of Christ as one family, we need to be vigilant and put our trust and belief in the Word of God. We find a starting point for all family members in today's second reading from Paul to the Colossians 
And again, I share these words with you. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these things put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If we could only on this day get a reset on these words of wisdom that brings parity to all family members and to set the spiritual and moral compass based upon the Word of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, on this special day in our church, let us become and grow as a true family of believers who share our Lord Jesus unto others. We can only share the Lord when we have felt the Lord in our lives during our devotion in our prayers and finally and this is so important don't be afraid to magnify the lord unto others especially in your family don't be afraid to say grace with one another as you sit at meal and don't be ashamed to be able to see to have your family members see you pray for one another. For in the end, my brothers and sisters, we are all a family called by God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Bless all your children with an obedient spirit. May each home which nurtures them be an image of your kingdom and the care of their parents a likeness of your love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, 
and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that psalm moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, to light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever may the peace of the Lord be with you always mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to life everlasting amen Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, in a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
what shall he return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
let us pray. Heavenly Father, as a family united in the Eucharist, we entrust to your loving care and correction the members of our families, both near and far. Supply their needs, guide their steps, keep them safe in body and soul, and may your peace rest upon us always. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. church and maybe it's part of God's spirit how blessed we really are that God has blessed each and every single one of us Richard our prayers have been with you and I heard that everything went well and so we are thankful to God and we continue to pray for you Richard um, Can I say more I'd love to have you say something <laughs> I also want to I want to say that Pentecostal's husband, that the, also the good news is I did, with the same problem. Peg, you know, we, we said last Sunday that at 7 o'clock for Sunday and for Monday, I asked people to set a couple of minutes off to the side. And I did that on Sunday, and I, and I know that others did it that we spent moments in prayer and reflection, and we, we prayed that God would hear our prayer. And what I would like to do is I'd like to continue this, and I'm putting together a devotional 
that uh, on Sunday at 7 o'clock that we can pause from our busy schedule and take the time where we can come together even though we may not be together physically, but in prayer to come together. And so I look for the intentions and, and I think this is something I have seen over the years, the power of prayer, that if you truly believe and you truly place your heart and your trust in God, God does hear us. So again, I am so happy to hear for the blessings. And today, Marianne, we, we pray for Wally, a dear friend of yours, uh, who has um, uh, experienced um, some difficulties. And we pray that the good Lord might be with her and help her with her difficulty. Um, I bring to mind that um, following this Mass, I will be traveling to Northampton to celebrate Holy Mass in absence of Father Adam, who is in Poland. Um, I do bring to mind this week, tomorrow uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, and I got it right this, this week at 7 o'clock p.m. and not a.m., that uh, <laughs> monthly parish committee to me. Uh, I did place on Thursday, but uh, I found out later on that Barbara was having some difficulties, so as far as I know, there will be a choir rehearsal unless I hear something different. Yes? Okay. So, yes, there's a choir rehearsal this Thursday. Thank you, Peg. Um, I want to bring to mind yesterday, I want to thank my brothers Wayne, uh, Wayne Shaw, and Bill Girardi, and Eric Dave Rinsey, uh, who came, and we've already started on uh, scraping down and patching up the interior walls, and I would like to call upon other men in our parish to be able to come next Saturday for 9 o'clock for a couple hours. You know, if we have a couple extra people, we're going to be able to finish the, uh, the interior walls. Uh, a good portion of the walls have been painted, or I'm sorry, have been scraped, and uh, we've used uh, uh, hydraulic cement. And we're hoping that uh, this coming Saturday that we're going to be able to paint the walls and have everything ready for our fall bazaar that's going to be on October 27th. Um, I want to thank those of you who have taken advertisement, have kind of spread the news among your friends. There are still other uh, things that we need to do. In the, um, in the bulletin today, uh, I received an email from Buddy about the uh, stuffed cabbage. Um, uh, the schedule is going to begin on Tuesday, October 23rd. We'll continue right up until Friday, October 26th. I wanted to bring to mind that next Sunday, well, it's going to be in the afternoon, I'm going to be flying down to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to attend a four-day conference. Uh, as I had stated um, at our last synod just a couple of weeks ago, I was placed on the National Commission on Mission and Evangelism, which I really feel is the most important. And our dear sister Shirley, I want to be able to, to work in conjunction with the, the future direction. We want to be able to get this information out. We want to be able to learn and to grow because these are two of the most important commissions and subcommittees that we have in, in our church. And so I ask that you remember in prayer uh, the efforts uh, of those who are seriously looking at the future of our church. Um, I'm happy to announce that this past week a new garage door was installed. Uh, there's still a little more work to be done on the roof and, and also uh, with the painting. Uh, so that's uh, in progress. I did have an opportunity to speak with Bob, Bobby Hearn, and he will be submitting his proposal for snow removal. So that's been taken care of. Um, I also had a talk to Bob about a fall cleanup. It was felt that we need at least another week, week and a half for the rest of the leaves to come down. And so therefore I have uh, put in the bulletin that on Saturday, November 3rd, starting at nine o'clock, we'd like to have uh, people come together, give a couple of hours, so we can kind of take care of some of the other things uh, to
to, to prepare for, for the winter. Um, I wanted to bring to mind that I did place a, an article um, in, in the bulletin about church etiquette. In no way was I directing it toward any one individual, but I still believe that there is a need for us to stop and to pause and to reflect that it is important that we become uh, Christian, um, become disciplined in Christian values and that we understand that the church is a time where people come from the outside world to pause and to offer prayer. Um, I'd like in our, our final prayers to remember to give God thanks for the blessings that we've received, to pray for others for whom we are seeking God's guidance for them, and also I ask that you remember in prayer the people that have experienced not only the Hurricane Florence, but also Michael. Um, I found, I actually happened to hear uh, today that the, um, the fatalities are now up to 15 and they're afraid that there's going to be more. Anybody who saw Mexico Beach and, uh, and also uh, other, other areas, uh, it, it totally, I think Mexico City, uh, I'm sorry, Mexico Beach was 95% destroyed. There are people who have no water, no food, no sanitation. They've lost everything. So please remember in your prayers today those who are less fortunate. Are there any things that I failed to mention? Surely. Yes, Father, um, we should also keep in our prayers Bishop Olinsky, who so kind of yes. a heart attack after this sentence. Thank you. I did have that, and thank you for reminding me. I received an email from Bishop uh, Sylvia Husky that Bishop Stanley Malinsky, the Bishop Ordinary of the Western Diocese, suffered a heart attack. And I ask that you remember him in prayer. Are there any other announcements that I failed to mention? Since there are none, um, let us now go before the altar of God and offer our prayers for our intentions. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Yek bencha pafulani Jesus Christus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our departed loved ones, Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.